This meets that. This meets that. You pick this and I'll pick that. We'll put them together and what do you get? A movie we describe as This Meets That. This Meets That. Yeah! Welcome back to another episode of This Meets That. As the theme song told you, we take two movies, we mash them up, and then that new movie, we pitch it, and it'd be described as This Meets That. How you doing, Steve? I'm good, Benjamin. How are you? I'm excellent. I'm excited because this is my favorite thing to record. Of everything that we do, this is, I think, where we're in our zone. This is where our creative juices flow, and we're so good at Juices just... everywhere. <laughs> it is a juicy room. Just mm-hmm. For anyone listening, you do not want to be in here. It's sopping with juice. <laughs> and it smells awful. <laughs> has nothing to do with the juice. (laughs) (laughs) I think with our our regular podcast, you know, we're just kind of catching each other up on all of our our shit. And it's just kind of like, you listen to me talk, I listen to you talk. But this, this is our element. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Now let's be like the Avatar and summon all the elements to make a juicy movie. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there's earth, wind, fire, water, and juice. juice. Yeah. Yeah. It's the secret fifth element. (laughs) Gross. All right. Well, do you have any movies in mind? Uh, I was not prepared for this, so oh, no. no. So give me um, 12.6 seconds. Okay. Um, I'm going to walk over to my... Oh, I didn't look, <laughs> Yeah, don't look at mine. I'm going to walk over to my DVD collection over here. Um, blah, 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 blah. You know what? Okay. You got one? I do. Oh, okay. I'm going to make this one weird. Okay. All right. One, two, three. Tommy Boy. Oh. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) I love it already. All right. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Richard, what's happening? Buzzsaw to the face. <laughs> and this just seems like like a perfect parody sort of movie that you would put two bumbling idiots in this crazy situation. And, and how do they get out of it? Do, do they have the wits about themselves? Yeah, I like... Because <laughs> what made the first Saw movie good was how small it was and the fact that it was you know just two guys in a room. Or it's just like, all right, what if we made those two guys David Spade and Chris Farley? <laughs> like, I just imagine a part where there would be like be the saw there, and Chris Farley would be like, no, nah, it would take too long, and then he would just gnaw his own <laughs> butt off. Or it's like, oh, you got to cut through your leg, Chris Farley, and he's just like, look at my leg, it's huge, it's gonna take forever. Look at your leg, David Spade. Like, no, come on, man. And like, I can snap this with my own hands. <laughs> They'd be in there so long, Chris Farley starts getting real hungry, and he looks over, and it's like one of those classic moments where it's just like Richard in a, like, ham hock <laughs> costume. You know what I'm talking about? Not a ham hock. What do you call it? Just like a mutton leg yeah, thing. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah, what do you do if you're describing a movie, oh, it's like Saw meets Tommy Boy. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm finding it hard to do something more than you take the guys from Tommy Boy and you put them in Saw. Yeah, true. How do you how do you mix these without being so close to the original source material that when you say it's like Saw meets Tommy Boy, you know exactly what it's going to be? It's like, oh, is this going to be a, a scary movie six where you just hey, I know they've already done Saw uh, with right. like Doctor Phil or something like that. Yeah, uh, I, I is that four with the War of the Worlds. Uh, War of the Worlds was four. In yeah. Signs. I think and Saw was signs. part of that. Because I think once they get into the alien, it's like a Saw trap or something. Uh, who knows? Oh, who knows? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, all right, well, let's... So, Saw essentially is just uh, people in a trap scenario. Because they've done something either morally wrong or ethic- ethically wrong. Uh, that Jigsaw has now put them in this situation to learn from their lessons, and Tommy Boy is about... Uh, uh, it's a road trip buddy comedy mm-hmm. um, try, with characters trying to uh, save uh, the, 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 the business. Yeah. So, is it you have two guys, and they you know, they, they need to take a cross-country trip and they need a vehicle. And 
they know the guy that lives in their building or whatever is like, yo, you could you could use my van or whatever. And they get in and maybe it kind of locks them into the van and they have to solve these puzzles as they're going on the trip. Not only stuff in the van, but it's like they have to go to specific ad- addresses and you have other people in torture situations where these two maybe have to say whether they live or die. They go like, look, this person was I think a, I got it. a prostitute and a child abuser and a drug addict, but they did this, that, and the third. Do you, do they live? Do they die? And they go from situation to situation where they're in control of these people's fates and they're just two kind of idiots and discovering... I don't know. Um, okay. I think I got it. it. Do it. So, what you have is you take uh, two rival businesses and you take the CEOs of each business. And these two CEOs have been at war with each other and, like, they, you know, really selling out their, you know, employees and their uh, customer base and maybe they're doing some back alley deals or whatever. And it's all in the sense of corporate greed or whatever. Huh? And then, so what you do is. How do you teach these guys a lesson and the value of life? You don't necessarily put their lives at risk. You trap them in a you trap them in the car, like you said, mm-hmm. and um, the only time they get out is to travel to these other places where people in there who work for them are currently in other traps, mm-hmm. and they're the only ones who can get them out. But the problem is, it's like oh, like the first place they go to the employee is from this one guy. So it's like, oh, well, if I let this guy's employee die, that's better for my business. Mm. And it's just like, who do they screw each other over? Because only, because maybe you set it up in a way where only one of them will get out. So it's just like, well, if I kill off his other employees, it'll protect my business. Not really sure exactly how it works out, but you have them do not a traditional road trip, but like stuck in a car and have to, these two guys who clearly hate each other and they're combative with each other. It's like, all right, we're now in the situation. Can we look past our previous uh, rivalry and save these people? But also like, I don't, I'm not gonna lose my business to you. So that adds another layer of the complicatedness to it. Um, So you still have the road trip element. You have the back and forth duo. Not necessarily that one's a straight man, one's the you know slob, but you know just two different personalities mm-hmm. com- being combative, and then while still trying to save a business and their employees, but in a heightened scenario where um, at any moment they could let someone die or save someone's life if it's to the benefit or disinterest of said business. Mm-hmm. So that's who's pulling the strings. Um, I assume some former in- employee who maybe has a connection somehow to to both because maybe you establish like oh these guys went to the same college or maybe they were in the same frat and this was like you know one was the president and one was the secretary or whatever and like they haze this guy and he like has hated them since or Mm -hmm. like they all started the same company together but they sold their friend out so they can move up and they they split off into two different businesses and so because this former uh, friend slash employee saw the way that both these guys went he's like okay i'm gonna you know bring these guys down and maybe by the end it was all some secret ploy to because they knew they couldn't work together Mm -hmm. all their employees get killed and then he's like okay well i'm just gonna kill you two and now i am in charge of both your businesses Mm -hmm. i'm gonna or you guys are gonna merge them but what you didn't realize is like you merged them with my company and now i own both of you okay that kind of thing and maybe i think you make the person pulling the strings He's the first person that gets killed, where it's, and like the voiceover, the, the the jigsaw character is like, this was your closest friend, and you guys both screwed him over, but if you let him die, you will absorb his, all of his uh, infrastructure, and they're both like, yeah, let's do it. And they quote-unquote kill this guy, mm-hmm. but, you know, the trap's fake, he's been in a, because that's a, that's a saw uh you gotta have Trip. a classic fake out. You know, someone is in on the thing while they're going through the situation. So you think, oh, they killed him. And so then when he shows up at the end, it's like, oh, my God, it was the, the third partner that, that did it the whole time. Right. Rob Lowe. Rob, Rob, by Rob Lowe. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, there's, there's something there. Something. It's not, it's not, not great. Um, yeah, I guess uh, the part that's kind of like, Maybe not, not that it's a requirement, but it's like, do you really need to like 
keep them in a car and make them do this like weird road trip bits like what are they just like how do you write it in a way where it's like I mean the only thing really keeping them in the car is like we have to save our friends but or not our friends but like we have to go get these people out um so maybe in the very beginning first guy gets off of a plane he thinks he's going to the the meeting of this merger this this big huge merger gets into a limo and the other guy's already in it and they're both like hey whoa what are you doing in my limo this is my thing and then clock 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 all the doors lock and the vider comes down and there's a man in a mask and he's just like welcome you guys are going to be going through this thing so we have a driver taking them to these things mm. forcing them to do it and maybe it could be something like Oh, we put a collar on you and if you go too far from the car you'll explode or whatever it is so it's like you need to do what we do otherwise you're going to die yourself so they kind of and in the first few of them where it's just oh it's just the employees that are dying oh who cares and then maybe it's their family and their their secretary that they had an affair with that they are oh, actually yeah. in love with and, and so the stakes get higher and higher but you start it with them being kind of stuck in this limo with this driver that they they can't get at. Maybe you handcuff them together. These two people have to work together while they're being handcuffed. That mm. could add an element. Yeah, I was gonna say you could do it like uh, back to if they get too far away from the car, or far away from whatever. It's like you know you could knock them out with some sort of gas or whatever mm. in the car, and then attach because they're businessmen but you want to like keep it low key in case they run into other people it's like you give them a like a, a wrist watch yeah. kind of thing Something where it's just like it monitors them and tells you where they are and and you know if they decide to run like it s stabs you with poison or sure. like blows your hand off or whatever or it could even be like go ahead run away we're in the middle of the desert where are you gonna go yeah you could walk this road and hopefully you'll find someone but have you seen a car pass in the past you know few hours mm -hmm. just it could be something as simple as that like Keep going with this game, otherwise you're just gonna die from the elements. Yeah. So what do we call on this? Saw me boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh you call it Um, alright. Uh road trip trap uh Trip trap. Trap trip. Oh, what if it ends and they get like sewn together and it's called merger oh and, and like shit. That's the final like no thing they just get... call it merger it's yeah, great just merger. I, I think it's ominous enough to where it could be like creepy but yeah merger merger okay okay the road merger merger <laughs> <laughs> m-e-r-g-e-r merger because because merger is also merging onto a road, sure. so it works on that aspect too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and business merger, mm -hmm. and it's like, do we team up? Do we, you know, mm -hmm. bring our business together? Do we set? Up? Yeah, I, just call it merger. And then at the end, they get the back half of their body like skinned from head to toe, and then they get like stuck together, and they, you know, the the, the wounds start to heal together. And if they want to get out, they have to separate. They have to break that merger gross yeah okay that's not great it's not our strongest no i'd say probably the weakest one we've done yeah. and, and we did but Samuel. even our weakest i think is still, There's still okay something there i mean it's 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 i'd say just as good as our Shaun of the dead sandlot you know i think it was called nosebleeds the zombie baseball you don't even remember this one do you i Remember that we talked about. I don't remember <laughs> what was the the pitch. Yeah, <laughs> pitch. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, all right. Let's let's try to find something a little more fun. A little more juicy <laughs> for our I mean, juicy room. We have so much already, but what's a little more? Okay. I got one. All right. Let me go back over my D, D collection. <laughs> Well, we tried our best. Maybe this next one will be a bit better. I already don't like my choice. Really? Well, don't pick it then. Um, okay. I mean, just think of something else to have my yeah. head. Um, it sucks that there's only so few movies out there. Uh, 
It's weird how your brain can, like, go to so many different places but not, like, land anywhere. Mm Mm-hmm. It's like I can think of a bunch and think of nothing at the same time. I'll try this one. Okay. One, two, three. Leo the Professional. Hmm. Have, hmm. Uh, have we ever done Goonies before? No. Okay. Leon and Goonies. Goonies. Not a great movie. <clears throat> you don't like Goonies? Not really. Not compared to Monster Squad. It's just it's just a better version. Yeah. Hot, hot take. <laughs> By hot take, I mean... Dog shit take. Dog shit take. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay, Leon the Professional and Goonie. So, they both have kids. Mm-hmm. One is more more kids. Yeah, and it's like you have kids going up against criminal adults. And professional, you have a kid teaming up with an adult to go against more adults. You got pirates and hidden treasure and secret maps. And you have the world of assassins and cleaners and whatnot and corrupt police force. Hmm. <laughs> so you take Okay, so hit me. Alright. You have a professional hitman, hit woman, and their son or daughter, and they have She's, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna use the professional characters. Sure. He has trained her to become the next best thing. She's really taking it to, uh, like a duck to water. She's really good, but he's getting older and he wants to retire. So they do a hit and they discover that this guy has a, not a treasure chest, a, a treasure map some sort of information where they keep all their wealth and so they decide like well if we get this we can retire and not do this anymore so they go searching for the 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 hidden treasure of uh, of this warlord or mob boss or whoever it was that they, they took down and maybe it takes them in a more fantastical thing like with goonies you have someone like sloth and the giant octopus and pirate ships and stuff. Maybe you can take it more fantastical instead of just being like giant octopus. Oh, that, it's a deleted scene. I'm sorry. Yeah, there, there's a part where they, they fight a giant octopus right really? before the ship. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I got cut out. Thank God. <clears throat> uh, instead of just being like, we got to get the USB drive that has all this crypto on it. Like, what, <laughs> what if it's it's something a little more interesting? Um. I don't know. You got anything? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, I think, like you said, you have your Leon character, and he has a daughter, and he has trained her in the ways of the assassin, but not so much necessarily, you know, to become an assassin. It's like, I trained you this way, so no matter what life throws at you, you can be ready for it. I don't want you to be an assassin, because that's not a life for anyone. Mm-hmm. Um so I want you to live a normal life. You just have the skills that I do. Um, so she goes to school and she makes friends and she's part of this, obviously because she's trained to kill, she's maybe a little bit different than all the other kids. So she is friends with this, maybe she's the new girl in school and it's her first day and she becomes friends with like this cast of misfit, you know, losers who, you know, are typically picked on and she's kind of like, you know, she's, her dad tells her, like, you're not allowed to, like, get into fights at school or anything, mm-hmm. but she's, you know, kind of like, oh, my friend's getting picked on, I'm getting picked on, but, like, I can't do anything about it, even though, like, I could beat up all of these bullies mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff. Um, and so she's trying to live a normal life with these kids, and then maybe you have their, um, you know, sort of your, uh, their, what are they called, the Spinellis or something, or from the Goonies? I think it's Spinelli. Mama's been just- some sure, some Italian good. family, yeah. <laughs> no. uh, the Chef Boyardee, the Chef D family. Yeah, you have uh, that sort of those sort of characters, but in cop form, who uh-huh. have now uh, 
who are dirty cops who have taken her dad and maybe they don't know that she exists or you know she spends the night at or she sneaks out one night um, and is hanging out with her friends and yeah, they're like oh just my. on the beach being normal kids just being know? normal kids yeah having and, a beer for the first time you know she goes back to her house and her house is ransacked and she figures out that her dad has been taken by these corrupt cops because maybe her dad has left clues it's like and if i get taken you know i know it's going to be these people because these people have been looking for me because i've been you know on the run from these guys and so then it becomes you know she kills somebody and her friends see it and they're like you know sarah i can't believe you killed a guy and she's like look my dad was a hitman. He's training. I have these skills, and like, oh well, you're our friend, so we'll help you. So then it becomes this adventure. It sounds kind of dark, mm-hmm. but at Goonies was kind of dark. Yeah. Where it's like, okay, how do we uncover the clues and find your dad? Maybe your dad. Maybe her dad has like wears an eye patch because uh, he got shot in a job. So they call him One Eyed Willie, like that kind of <laughs> stupid thing, you know? Um, maybe her dad like you said had like taken money from these guys and like that's what they retired with and so these guys going after the treasure of you know their family or the guys that they work for but it's like how do we save the dead and it's not really about the money for the kids Mm -hmm. it's just about saving you know the leon character but that's what i got Mm -hmm. it's essentially that it's you know normal kids teaming up with your kick-ass hit girl kind of character Mm -hmm. to to save Leon yeah and maybe they have maybe the dirty cops have uh, you know someone who's like a sloth like big dude and that's Mm -hmm. gonna be the guy that Leon has to 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 fight or the kids team up with somehow or something (laughs) you know you're not in love with this one either yeah yeah not particularly this this seems like should be easier maybe we just had a juice this episode <laughs> but it's so wet in here <laughs> yeah I don't know if I got anything else for this one what would we call it maybe just like goons or the goon goon squad something <clears throat> where it's you know she's taken down all of her dad's former goons okay. maybe that that's like all the people that this uh, professional hitman has done dirty in some way they've all decided to team up and like the only way we could take down leon is if we all do it at the same time and so they do get them and they all have plans for them and so she's getting the clues of oh well someone left this mass matchbook oh that's matchbook eddie so let's go talk to him first and then you know so she goes through the the different families the different houses and and takes them all out one by one. And then I think, like, Goon Squad is a fine title. Now, it's not so much has anything to do with Goonies other than the kid aspect yeah. of it, but... Yeah, yeah. No, I... Go on, okay. Go on, go on. <laughs> I was just thinking, okay, so you still have the Leon character, and he did all these guys dirty, and so... They, um, but, it's, like, he's killed these people, and then... It's all of his, all the, like, let's just call them gangsters, kids, and they all go to the same school. Is this what you're thinking, yeah, too? I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah, and so all these, and maybe, like, they're able to kill Leon, but then it becomes a child version of, it's like, okay, it's Leon's daughter versus all the kids who killed Leon. So then it's just like, a child version of an adult revenge mm-hmm. uh, hitman story. So I was thinking, so Leon and other professionals, other bosses, like maybe he is the main hitman for a certain mob boss. Okay. <clears throat> and this mob boss is meeting up with other mob bosses, maybe in the same circuit, not necessarily villains. It's like they all have their own territories. They work okay with each other. They, yeah. It's symbiotic. And maybe each of them have their own hitman or whatever. But all the kids are, they could either be the children of assassins, the children of mob bosses, the children of just like straight up goons. And not that it's like take your child to work day or whatever, yeah. but it's like most of these people are 
raising their kids to be part of the business and they all kind of have grown up with each other and there may be some tension because it's like well my dad hates your dad but you know i want to be your friend or we can't be friends so then all the kids are kind of like hanging out back in the playroom while they're while the adults are having their discussion and then you have like a red hood come in take them all out and now all the kids are like we got we all have to team up because now we have to go fight this bigger bad and avenge all of our parents Mm. yeah because you could write in some sort of way where you know the the gangster uh, like the these gang members or hitmen or whoever are just kind of like well we'd never we were all at war with each other but we'd never agree to be in the same place without all of us have something to lose so that's why we bring our kids like you know we know like you're not going to kill me in front of my kid because that means you're going to have to kill my kid maybe it's a it's an honor sort of thing like look my kid's in the room it's like you're I'm not going to do fucked up it's shit it's like I'm willing to meet with you like you bring your kid I'll bring mine it's like they, I, it's not like anyone doesn't believe like they're not all willing to kill children to get mm-hmm. what they want because they're all you know bad dudes but it's just like they're in order to get anything done it's just like it, you, I know if I kill your kid my kid and my family are going to suffer too mm-hmm. so the fact that they're just in the same place we can be you know copacetic for yeah. a little bit mm-hmm. like it doesn't mean that the other dad won't kill the other dad's kid mm-hmm. it just means like we have an understanding that this is yeah these are the rules these are the rules yeah okay so besides just being a bunch of kids teaming up we gotta we gotta add a little more goony flair to this because it's very leon the professional and not too much goony stuff so i i think like whatever adventure they're going on to fight whoever should be pretty crazy pretty fun not necessarily pirate ships in a, in a cave sure. or whatever but something more than just warehouses and strip clubs you know the typical crime locales you know that would be kind of fun to see you know i don't know how old all these kids i mean i guess the kids could be varying age from you know 8, ten eight to, to uh, 14 i'd say yeah um but it, I think it would be kind of funny to see, like, you know, 10-year-olds going into strip clubs and stuff like that. Just, you know. Hey, what are you doing in, in here? Just I've like, never even seen a booby before. <laughs> yeah, all the, the littlest ones are just like, whoa. And, yeah, I mean, that, that, that could be funny. But I, I want something more than just the same things we, we've seen before. Yeah, I mean, I guess you... Maybe okay. all of them have you know that sort of thing where uh well we all found a treasure and we all locked it away we all have a key to it and the last surviving person gets all the keys and gets to open it maybe this person who came and killed all these crime bosses got their special tokens or whatever so they can get the big the big money pile maybe they all pool their money for safekeeping or something yeah, you do a like dark night thing where yeah. you have the banker guy who's just like give me all your money i'll keep it mm-hmm. safe and yeah. so the kids are you know, having to use their parents' business. Because, like, what if one is... Okay, this guy runs clubs and strip clubs, and he he's the prostitution side of the crime. And this one, oh, he's in quote-unquote construction, and that's more like the body disposal. Mm-hmm. And this person works for the mayor, so that's the government side. And they just have to kind of, I don't know, use these different... Mm-hmm. Agendas to kind of find out what's going on with the real killer, or something. <laughs> <laughs> or something. <clears throat> All right, what are we calling this? Uh, I like goons, or you know, little goons. Mm-hmm. Um, just call them the amateurs. <laughs> <laughs> Because they're not professionals. Yeah. Or, uh, like, if they were all hit men, you do hit boys. Mm. Yeah, that doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, hmm. I like amateurs. Amateurs? Amateurs. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll write it down. Okay, well, that's only at, like, 33 minutes, Dang. and there's a lot of dead air. Do you want to do one more of this meets that, and then a director versus director, or should we just keep it to two, and then director versus director? Because 
be really nice to have something a little more of a slam dunk. I mean, yeah. We, I mean, we can do three, and if there's one that was just like, this was a total waste, then just, cut, just cut it. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank now you got to think of another movie. Break myself up. All right. God, our Zoolander misery was a fucking slam dunk. Yeah. Along with... Yeah, re-listening to that, I was like, whoo, that's good. I mean, I had to pull this one out at some point because it's just such a... It's a concept-heavy movie. Um, but it's like, I just never know what you're going to pick, so I don't know if it's going to be a good one, but... All right. I guarantee it's the same as mine. <laughs> if we If we do that... Okay, what do we do... Because we, we've had, like, oh, I was going to say that, but we've never said the same thing. So if we ever say the same thing, we have to celebrate in, in some way. If we say the same thing, we just watch that movie. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just becomes a two-hour podcast of <laughs> us just, like, reacting to what we're, you know. I wonder if you could do, if you're, like... Training day and training day. Well, how do you something that meets this meets that, but take different elements to training make something day meets new? Training day. Yeah. Anyhow. Huh. No, I mean that's something to think about. Like if you took training day, and you mix the little training day in it, <laughs> <laughs> what kind of movie do you get? Okay, so you got one. Uh, I forgot it because we. <laughs> Oh, no, I got it. Yeah. One, two, three. Groundhog Seven. Day. Okay. <laughs> Damn. Groundhog's Day. Groundhog Day meets Seven. That's... Oof. Oh, buddy. I know I say this every time, but we have a list somewhere of every choice we make, right? Yep. Okay. Because I feel like I'm going to repeat myself a lot. Well, even it's though like... I seem to have not... Seven yeah. seems like something that we would have done because it's like we did Fight Club with David Fincher mm, already. Okay. So, okay. So I mean, it could be simple, something as simple as you have your Brad Pitt character. He's tracking down this serial killer who has a quirk. I wouldn't say do the seven deadly sins. Obviously, you do something else. He does it based off uh, the, the Four Horsemen of Apocalypse or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's always kind of getting close to the end and his wife dies and then he has to do it again and, and it's like it maybe it doesn't repeat until his wife dies so even if he like kind of fucks up and he he can't just kill himself and be done with it he has to kind of wait until his wife dies then he gets to try to do the case over and over again and he keeps trying to do this case but it always seems to end in some sort of tragedy and and that's just his time loop that he has to to deal with mm, see I was kind of going the other way it's just like what if it's not necessarily the cop is stuck in a time loop and has to solve the you know crime before the, the day's over mm-hmm. what if the killer is in a time loop kind mm-hmm. of thing okay. um, so the killer is stuck in the same day over and over again but every day he's like this is kind of like his ultimate fantasy and he's just like killing a new person every day mm-hmm. um so the there's a cop who's investigating so the only way you can ever get caught is if like the cop can solve the crime in like 24 hours or like maybe you do it in a way like because he feels invincible that like he does kill people like out in the open and then you have and like Daisy gets arrested and then you like teleport them back and yeah he could get arrested and learn about the cops and so then when his day starts over he could taunt them with knowledge about those cops that they'd be like how did he even know that about me yeah because what if like maybe he's just uh he's never killed anyone before and then he like he becomes a serial killer in the sense that like Every day he, like, learns something new about how to be a better killer. And so, you know, of course, like, the first time he kills someone, he's arrested, like, so fast. And he's like, okay, well, and then, like you said, he, like, knows what cop is going to come after him. Because it's always, like, it's the time of night. This cop's on duty. Mm -hmm. Like, he's the one detective in town. So, of course, he's going to show. So, he (laughs) starts meeting him. And so, you have him, 
living the same day over and over again, getting more information. But you also cut to the cop who is just living this day like one time, the one time. So it's just like you're getting both perspectives. And I'm not sure exactly how you would like intercut it. But it's just like, yeah, this guy is learning so much. But at the same time, you're seeing like to to the cop, like this guy's like like this crazy serial killer. It's like, how am I going to catch this guy? Because he like knows me or he's taunting me and Mm -hmm. he's got all this stuff. But then in this other like scenario, you see like this guy is like maybe a, an idiot kind of serial killer, and it's like I'm not sure if I'm doing this justice, but I I, I like the concept, but I don't know how you can like it, it's hard to do the cop side because like you take the killer and he uh, takes a woman and he pushes her off a bridge. Okay, uh-huh. so the cop comes home and goes, man, there's a, a guy pushing people off bridges. And his wife says, oh, honey, don't worry about it. You're such a good cop. You'll get him. And then, whoop, day starts over. This guy, now the killer doesn't push people off bridges. He's shooting people in the streets. Then you cut to the cop. He comes home. Man, there's a guy and he's shooting people in the streets. I don't know how I'm going to stop him. It's okay, honey. You're really good at your job. So every time you would do the, the cop stuff, I think because it's only a day, you he can't really form much of a case. It's like yeah. it's a one crime thing. It's the beginning, so he doesn't even know it's a serial killer. It's just a this thing happened. Right, 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 right. So what do you do with him that makes it interesting to keep going back to him? I mean, unless somehow, I mean, you could do it in a way where they're both stuck, and they're the only two people in the time loop, and mm, to two so, in a time loop. So two in the time loop. Yeah. So it's the guy and. Uh, the detective and the and the killer and you know maybe the detective knows who the killer is you know day one because mm-hmm. he was the guy who caught him and then the day starts over it's like wait I was that guy who I arrested just a dream yeah. and the guy who like maybe goes to jail at the end falls asleep in jail wakes back up in his bed and they start their day over again he's like mm-hmm. oh I have another chance and so he becomes a better and better serial killer and then he's like even though I know who this guy is like I can tell everyone on the force we need to look out for this guy yeah, but the bureaucracy of being a cop is holding me back from just getting him yeah and then so uh, even if everyone on the force is like okay we know who it is like even if they catch him mm-hmm. back to you know square yeah, one and, the and like maybe he even kills the serial killer in one of them because he's just so fr- frustrated he kills yeah. him but then whoop, day starts over again and it's like I can't even kill this guy and be done with it so then it becomes just this back and forth of just like you can't kill me I can't kill you you have it's like we're both stuck in this thing it's like maybe it's like you can't stop chasing me though because it's like you know I'm going to hurt people it's like maybe one day we will get out of this thing or, more, or maybe we're just destined to like torture you or like I'm just destined to torture you forever like mm-hmm. maybe this is your hell kind of thing and the detective is like no no I'm not going to let this guy beat me or whatever and it's like I don't know if you have a situation where like they eventually do get out um, or you know do they team up or you know how like do you have the scenario where like he captures them one day and they just sit in the they, there's a scene where they're just sitting in the um, interrogation room and they're going back and forth and just have this joker <laughs> Batman kind of thing it's just like look man like we're in this do whatever you want man I'll like, be out tomorrow uh, <laughs> yeah so like none of this matters I'm just having so much fun killing anyone I want I can kill your wife I can kill everyone on this police force I can you know it's like it has infinite possibilities yeah. and I can see a scene where it, like the cop eventually goes no matter what I do I can't stop him because because of I know where he lives but I can't get to him early enough before he's already gone mm-hmm. so I'm always trying to hunt him down and eventually he goes like what's the point I'm he, whoever dies is gonna wake up tomorrow and be alive and it, there's really no consequences so maybe he just says fuck it I give up I'm just gonna dedicate my life to my wife and my family and stuff and the killer is kind of like he's doing all these murders and stuff in broad daylight and the cop's not showing up I'm like what the hell this is this was our thing we were just gonna keep going at it and then eventually like he sees oh he's just trying to live a normal life in his his day to day and so he shows up at the the cop's house and just kills his wife right in Mm -hmm. front of him and just be like you have to play this game. We are playing this thing, yeah. whether you like it or not. We could come back here every day, and I could kill your wife every day. If that's how you want it, that's how we'll play it. But uh, if you don't want to see your wife get killed every day, come come hunt me, hunt me down, and, and let's have some fun. And I got a pitch for you now, is what if, uh, you know, doing this over and over again for, you know, Groundhog's Day, or Groundhog Day, they said, he's like, possibly lived for 500 years, something yeah. like that, like some crazy... Hundreds or maybe even thousands of years. Yeah. Uh, 
So, like, what if just the constant dealing with a serial killer and, like, seeing his wife die thousands of times, seeing friends die thousands of times, seeing countless people die thousands of times, and hunting this guy, and, like, none of it matters. What if that kind of, like, either drives him insane or he goes, like, okay, there's nothing I can do to stop this guy from killing or, like, making me play this game. What if I kill everyone myself every day to where he can't win because I don't let him play. Mm. And so you do it. I don't know if you just do it in a small town where, like, he tricks everyone to, like, I don't know. You just do it. Gas leak or something. Gas leak. Or, like, he, uh, his best friend works at a water treatment plant. Kills his, Everybody's at the local football game. So it's just like, so in order to beat the serial killer, it's just like, I, I'm i the greatest serial killer. Mm-hmm. I killed everyone. And they're just like, no, this isn't how it's done. And then they, because... They've, he's now eliminated. Like, that's the thing that, like, jumps them out of the, the time loop. And so, like, he has to kill everyone. Not necessarily that it stays that way. It's just, mm. like, or, I mean, maybe he does. I think it, it should yeah, be. It should be he, that. He, he knows, like, I could kill everybody and I'm going to just wake up tomorrow. He kills everyone, goes to bed, wakes up the next day and realizes, I killed everybody in town. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, and so, yeah, if he kills everyone in town, he knows he's going to go to jail like it's clear he, he did it it's not yeah. like he was trying to hide it because like he never had any reason to hide yeah. it and then the the serial killer is just like holy shit like I can get away scot free it's like well I killed everyone almost everyone then the cop shoots that guy mm-hmm. and himself the and end. that's how you know it is. it's too dark and there's no uplifting part of that yeah. but yeah. you know if you want to do that sort of like oh I'm here for a reason the reason is I have to shove it up this guy's ass by killing everyone I love and I know guess. I don't know if that's really the way you want to end it. I just think that would be an interesting concept. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I, before we got to the two people in a time loop, I was thinking, well, what if one guy was just like Groundhog Day, doing his normal thing, but he does kind of go crazy and he snaps and he kills someone on the street and is like, oh, crap, I can't believe I just did that. But then when he realizes, oh, wait, I'm in a time loop. I've been in a time loop forever. I can totally get away with this. And then he just kind of goes over the edge and just becomes a monster. Maybe he wasn't always a monster. Maybe being stuck in this time loop turned him into a monster. So then that got me thinking, and let's do time travel. Thinking got me drinking. (laughs) Let's do some time travel cliche bullshit, but like, what if the cop is like a young upstart cop and the killer is the cop from the future? He's been in the time loop for so long, he went nuts so you're going that uh, predestination route, yeah, I see. Going okay. a little, little, little nutty with the, the circular time loops. So the cop is stuck in this time loop for so long that he goes crazy, becomes the psycho killer, and then one day, all of a sudden, his young self shows up again. Because like maybe he ages every loop. Maybe that'd be something different mm. where it's like you do take that day so after years and years he's getting older and older and older and I guess to the people around him it'd be very shocking that he woke up one day and he's suddenly 20 years older but then you have him age up 40 years and he's this old man serial killer and then bring into the, the time loop his younger self I don't know how you make that work and connect like does he see himself and go like oh what's the greatest challenge but me you know, I was a great cop. Let's see yeah, if I, mean, I, I can guess take like him down. If the if the cop when he was younger was like a drinker or something like that, and you know maybe he just went out with some buddies and like fell asleep in a field or in his car or something, and so like you know it's not like he's like waking up in his bed every day. And then his you know he rolls over, his wife's just like, oh my god! It's just mm-hmm. like he wakes up in a place where like you know even if he wakes up the same day and he gets older like no one's gonna notice so like one day he just rolls into town and everyone just thinks he's like some old guy who lives mm-hmm. in town or whatever like you can do it in a way where yeah, maybe it gets to a point where like no one notices his age anymore because it's just yeah maybe he took 20 years to be like look I'm in a time loop I'm gonna be in this cabin and I'm just gonna relax there and then so he can age himself up and then go back to town where people knew him and then they don't recognize him right <clears throat> You know, there's always fun stuff to do with with time loops. It's just like, why are they there? How do they get out? And what's the lesson that you're supposed to learn? Yeah. And, you know, skipping the time travel cliches, um, what if instead of a movie, you you could do this as a show? And what if 
every episode is the same day over again, but it's in a parallel uh, universe. Okay. So, like, he is in this day, kills somebody, restarts, but that day to those people still exists. Yeah. So it's just, like, a kind of a branching timeline thing. So you have the overarching story of, like, you see this guy go, like, okay, I'm doing something different every day. I'm connected to this. But then you have, uh, you know, the same cop dealing with a different crimes every episode even though the one character who's stuck in the time loop has continuing information this one is getting new information every time i don't know if you could do that i don't think you can because it's like i I kill a guy on this day the cop sees that happens well then the guy does his time loop on the same day again now the cop hit that new timeline is two people now were killed on that day. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. But that, but it can't work because then the but, next day is not, he can't, like, if he's on a time loop on Monday, he's only doing Mondays. His Monday can't turn into a Tuesday or a Wednesday. So it's like the cop, okay, yeah, he has that crime, but then there's no other crime to be connected to it. And then there would be another timeline where Monday he had a crime and there's no other crime to connect it because he's just still doing Monday over and over again. And yeah, you could have different timelines where the cop is solving a different crime, but then there's nothing to go past that because it was just a crime on that day. Time travel is really hard to write about. <laughs> okay, so what, if but this hoodie was a time hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what would you call this? Um, time jump. <laughs> uh, seven groundhogs for seven sisters. Yeah, we really didn't lean into the seven thing. Yeah, it was, it was just serial, serial killer. killer. Yeah, it's because it's like with seven, it's the seven deadly sins. And I think you can't use that too much. Yeah. No, I, I wouldn't want it to be the seven deadly sins. Because it's like, Shazam uses the seven deadly sins, but they're big monsters and stuff. So that works. But if you did something with the seven deadly sins and a killer, it's just, it's a little too close. That's why I think for this, you would have to just come up with another thing that yeah. the, the, the killer is all about. There has to be a, well, there's definitely serial killer time travel movies out there. But not repeating I mean I, I mean, guess uh, what was it called um, Death Day Happy Death, Death, Day. Happy Death Day yeah kind of that freaky a little bit uh, no not really um, I mean there's a movie called Time Crimes where it does take place in the day and it's just a guy going back in time within that day he's not in a loop he's just he's actually going back in time a couple of times and there's a murder mystery going on at the same mm. time very cool if you like time travel time crimes baby we should watch Predestination again. Too. I know. I, I want to watch it with because I think she would really like it. I well, I remember I told her about it mm-hmm. and she was like, "Oh, that sounds really cool." And then I think you got upset with me because I, <laughs> it's like, I, I wanted to see it, but it yeah. like I, it's been so long. now. Yeah, I was like, "Oh, this movie," and she has no idea because, like we said before, like she doesn't retain stuff like that. Yeah. It's not important to her. Okay, so this would be like. Uh, but I, I'm sorry, I didn't come up with the title. Yeah. Um, so. I mean, live, die, repeat. (laughs) (laughs) Kill and kill again. I mean, Time Crimes is a good (laughs) good title for this as well. Yeah. Kill time. (laughs) To kill time. Yeah, it's just like, you know, because you're... Yeah, that's it. Killing time. Killing time. Killing time. Cheesy, yeah. Cause like in my bra- it, like in my brain when I hear that, it's just like, oh yeah, I'm just killing time. Yeah. But then another part of me is just like, I feel like it just, uh, it's, it, it's not like on paper. It just doesn't look right. <clears throat> yeah, and it's like I'm killing time, or hey, it's killing, killing time. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. thinking. It's like killing time, like Hulk smash. Mm-hmm. As opposed to just... I mean, I mean, you could always call it, like, just killing time, or I'm killing time. It just... You could throw another word mm-hmm. at the beginning for the context. Yeah. Because killing time just sounds like... <clears throat> dinner! Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> ding, 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 ding! It's killing time! Purge. <clears throat> okay, well, those were three... I mean, I think we got better as we went. Yeah. But none of these are getting greenlit. I'm sorry. 
What do we call the misery? Model citizen. Oh, damn, that's a good title. <laughs> Fuck, we need to write this shit. I know, listening back to that episode, I was like, oh, that that's good. Oh, yeah, I forgot we talked about that. Damn, you could do this movie like 17 different ways. I love it. Yeah. Good, good title. Mm. Fuck. All right, well, I, can, I mean, we normally do too, but usually we speak a little longer because we're better at it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm sorry for everybody who clicked on this episode, but hey, maybe our director versus don't director. Don't sell it, just, just sell I it. I mean, don't, don't you sure. clicked on the right episode because this director versus director is amazing. I can't believe we picked these two amazing filmmakers. You bowl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You bowl and... Oh. Uh. The ShamWow guy who did inappropriate comedy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He, did he direct that? I think so. Oh, dude. Did he go to prison? I think so. Touching little kids, right? Wasn't it? Was I it think so. Rapey? Yeah. Yeah. I Vince Offer is his name. Vince Offer. And he did direct it. Wow. Um, so it's like, what do you want your stage name to be? I want to be called Vincent D'Onofrio. I'm like, no, can't be that. Someone already that. It's like, fine, I'm Vince Offerman. What was his name? Vince Offer. Oh, Vince Offer. Like, okay, I guess. Or like Chins Offer. All right. Legal issues. Oh, I thought you were looking up a movie. Still <laughs> talking about this ShamLaw guy. What do you want to know? Yeah, that's true. Or he hit his wife or girlfriend... Offer in a. He was arrested in 2009. Offer and a 26 year old sex worker were arrested in Miami Beach, Florida, after a physical altercation. Okay. Uh, reports say that the woman had bitten on to Offer's tongue and refused to let go, at which point Offer began beating her and left her with lacerations and fractures. Um, Damn. Offer later spoke to the arrest. He stated, it probably saved my life. What, getting arrested? Um, no, I guess... The incident? Uh, beating the woman who... Oh, that, Like, okay. was holding his tongue with her mouth. Oh! Ouchie, well... Um, he also sued the Church of Scientology. Well, that's not one you're gonna win. Because the Church of Scientology began a large-scale smear campaign against Offer and his film. Why? Does he talk about Scientology in it? I guess. Mm. The director claims of Scientology. See, we need Nick on for his expert expertise on uh, inappropriate comedy. Go ahead. Make me gay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Adrian Brody. No, I, I know that, but what's oh. it called? Uh Flirty Harry. Flirty Harry. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. God, I, I feel so bad for him that he actually had to say that line. Like, Adrian Brody? Yes. But this movie has a 2.8 on IMDb. Wow. Higher than I thought. Yeah. Lindsay Lohan is in it. Michelle Rodriguez is in it. Rob Schneider is in it. Oof. Well, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. The Schneid's in it? The Amazing Racist segment. That's actually kind of funny. Too. Oh, yeah. Did, wasn't he trying to get people on a boat to go back to Africa? Like, free boat ride, back to Africa, black people only. <laughs> it's like, on pay, like, as you're saying it, like, all that sounds fun. Yeah, but when it's like, it's one thing to write a sketch about that where you can plan the lines between the people. But when it's improv on the street trying to be offensive, that's that's not funny. But a crazy rich man yeah, who same. wants to put all the black people on his private yacht so he can take him back to Africa? That's funny. The Amazing Racist segment was based on an online series by Ari Shafir, if you know who that is, uh-huh. which were also scripted but done in public places. Some of the shots in front of yours. Adrian Brody is very good friends with Vince Offer. Why? But, okay, if they're really good friends, you don't make your friend do Flirty Harry. Ugh, that's not a good friend. Maybe it seemed like a good idea at the time. Maybe. Maybe it's just really drunk and was laughing so much and then even got on set like that. That's a really funny bit. But then as he's doing it, it's like, ooh, this is bad. 
Anywho, we Anywho. talked about that <clears throat> guy too long. Yeah, well, I'm happy I'll get him cut. So we are going to do a director versus director. <laughs> I already have mine. Uh, give me... And I'm pretty sure you've seen it. Hopefully you've seen it. Uh, but I think maybe... Yeah, whatever. 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 Okay. 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 Um... He's directed by one guy. Yeah. That's really hard. There's like 12 white guys, and we've already done 10 of them. So, um. Well, I mean, like, a lot of them have multiple movies, so if you want to pick Steven Spielberg again, or. Yeah. Uh, no. I'm doing someone new. <laughs> sure. I don't, I don't think we've done him yet. Cool. All right. One, two, three. Starship Troopers. <laughs> I said Ben Sauber. I'm just kidding. All right. Paul Go. Verhoeven's Starship Troopers. And I pick Ridley Scott's Gladiator. Have we done that before? We have done... Uh, Alien? No, we did Aliens. Okay, no, that's fine. Mm, yeah. yeah. I don't think we did... Ridley Scott. Cool. Okay. Okay. And you said, I'm sorry? Paul Verhoeven's Starship Troopers. Oh, I don't think this is going to be a good one. Well, he's also done Robocop. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, he's done Total Recall. I mean, I have seen Starship Troopers. So. Yeah. But it's like for reference of what else he can bring. And we did a movie called... Oh, oh, we did Hollow Man. Oh! The Kevin Bacon one? Yeah. Mm. Showgirls, Basic Instinct. Showgirls, one of the most... <laughs> yeah. Revered. <clears throat> so pretty much Robocop, Total Recall, Basic Instinct, Showgirls, Starship Troopers, Hollow Man, and then nothing else is important. Okay. Okay. Well, what I'll say is, you know, I think... We can all agree that Starship Troopers is one of those movies that isn't really good, but has that has something to it because I think that there is potential there. Obviously, from your face, you really love Starship Troopers. But I think Starship Troopers is an amazing movie that has tons of stuff there, from its like fascist propaganda to to just like how the world would evolve past petty earth wars and this kind of regime has taken place so what is it like just being a kid in this sort of regime where you have to join the military to have it even to have a baby and 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 the biggest threat is just this so-called mindless bugs i think it's a fantastic movie i i think it stands the test of time and is probably one of his best yeah i'd probably say it's better than robocop um, Robocop is fantastic as well. Uh, I just think that I Ridley Scott would take Starship Troopers and make it what it should be. Um, now, you could argue that Starship Troopers works well because it's almost a comedy. Yeah, it's camp. And, yeah, it's campy. Um, I think Ridley Scott would definitely take it in a more serious direction but i think he would make it an epic space uh, like an epic space war that we haven't really seen too much of in film because typically uh, sci-fi movies are on the more expensive side because mm-hmm. everything's cg and it's like you know you can't really film in space and that kind of stuff mm-hmm. but like what if he cuz really scott pretty much made had a huge part in making sci-fi what it is today because he did start the Alien franchise and he has Blade Runner Blade Runner I mean he has tons of experience in the sci-fi world and he definitely has a great eye and has made Oscar winning movies I think he could have taken Starship Troopers and made those bugs horrifying and a menace to like really look at during war and like <laughs> I think they're pretty I mean, they, scary because they, <laughs> they are scary because they are big and like don't they're like they're blood like melt people or they, no. sh- they shoot is there a big bug that shoots like acid there there is a big beetle that shoots like uh fire it's like a an oh, acid fire okay yeah. yeah um i just think 
Ridley Scott could really capture the horrors of war um, in an epic way that uh, this other director... Paul Verhoeven. I, I'm not going to be able to say Verhoeven. Paul Verhoeven. I did it. Uh, <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> Paul Verhoeven uh, couldn't do, and I, I think it would be scary and epic and uh, intense in a way you, when you lose the campiness that Verhoeven does. Yeah, I, I I think Ridley Scott would make a good Starship Troopers, especially if it uh, focused more on the original source material, because right. in that they have, like, mech suits. It's not ground troops in mm-hmm. the way the movie showed it. Uh, I, I love the, the bug look, and Ridley Scott nailed it with the alien... So I know he can make a good monster, Mm -hmm. and we know he could do war with, like, uh, uh, Kingdom of Heaven. Kingdom of Heaven, Gladiator, Gladiator. um, Last Duel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's done tons of war movies. And I think he can make it feel gritty and real, where Paul Verhoeven, this is definitely kind of a glossier, slicker version. It's not too dirty. Uh, it's got its its fair share of, of gore and violence, but it's it's not Lath's dual blade in the mouth sort of gritty realism. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he would do a, a good job, but I think losing some of the camp and the propaganda that's put in, uh, I, I mean, do you think just because Ridley Scott's on it, why, why would it lose the propaganda? Um, I mean, because that's very much a, a Paul Verhoeven thing. He does a lot of these cut away to fake commercials or the news and and uh, especially in RoboCop and, and in Total Recall it's just it's more of his style not necessarily this would be in the script mm. uh, but I mean, you, you never know he could but let's do the, the, the flip Paul Verhoeven's Gladiator I don't think this would look great no he I mean <laughs> we're talking about a movie that has won the Oscar yeah I don't like Gladiator. It's not. I don't hate Gladiator. I. It's. It's like Braveheart for me. It's just like I love both Braveheart like, and Gladiator. Yeah, I guess they're great and all, but I just don't give a shit about the actors and what's going on. I, I'm just not interested in, Fair in a lot of period piece stuff. So I think Paul Verhoeven would make. You remember when make he, history fun? <laughs> just turn this chair around and like, hey kids, <laughs> let me tell you about. Roman Gladiator. Yeah, I, I think maybe his take on it might be a little more like a Knight's Tale. Okay. Yeah. It, uh, Knight's Tale's great. Something maybe not as serious. And, and say you have like the product placement fake commercials, but in a gladiatorial arena of like having your winners like call out, you know, you know, Ezekiel. Buy Zeus juice. Yes, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I, I think he could, if. If he got to rewrite Gladiator and make it fun, give it some comedy, it could potentially work, but I don't see him making it better. No. So I would I would say I'd I'd want to see Ridley Scott's Starship Troopers, but I but in saying that, I feel like I kind of already know what that'd be like. It it would look like Blade Runner for all the like um, human side of things, and it would just be alien for the alien side of things. Uh, yeah. Because, and a lot of his movies are so dark and, and gloomy and stuff like that. Yeah, he definitely doesn't have the best color palette when it comes to his movies. So, yeah. Um, but I don't think it's ever been his strong suit is, mm-hmm. you know, uh, the cinematography of it all. Yeah. But that being said, uh, yeah, so I think Ridley Scott could make Starship Troopers better, like you said. Um, and it's just, the question is, like, do I want something better or do I want something different? different. And then, mm. you know, mm. Verhoeven's Gladiator would certainly be different. Yeah. Um, and it would be, would he be trying to make an Oscar-worthy movie or would he be trying to make no, I something No, he's ever, ever looking for that. Right. So, I mean, what... If you were going to make a Gladiator movie and you had this guy direct it, like, what do you think you would like to see in that movie? Uh, for me, it's like, I don't want to see Gladiator. I don't care who, who makes it. But if you said, oh, Ridley Scott's making Gladiator, 
but he's he's putting in a touch of aliens. So it's a gladiatorial arena with alien monsters and stuff, like the movie Arena. I'm all for that. But I don't care who you stick on this movie. If they're taking that exact script, I don't care who does it. I'm, I don't care. It's you're, No one's going to make it so much better or so much worse to make me care. So I would have to go the other way with uh, Ridley Scott's Starship Troopers. Because at least I like the aliens. I like the war of this. Whereas I don't care about gladiator arena fights. Unless there was an alien. It's like when the tiger comes out. It's like, cool, a tiger. But then that's about it. Mm. You know, throw a rhino in there. Throw two hippos and a couple of sloths and uh, <laughs> right, riding the hippos. Uh, yeah, it, it would have to be something more. Um, just doing Gladiator with a different actor, different director, different set. Uh, you're not going to win. Uh, one of them's going to look like that Hercules movie with uh, the Twilight dude. Remember, there's two Hercules. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, oh, man. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Forgot about that. One of them is going to end up looking like that. You know, it's it's going to look yeah, like yeah. Dookie. <laughs> I was going to say like yeah, maybe it would just look like uh, Immortals. Yeah. Yeah. Immortals, Gods of Egypt. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, which I didn't care for any of the. I didn't see Gods of Egypt, but <laughs> it's a ride. Sure is a ride. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Paul Verhoeven, you were. Ben says you're not a good director. I didn't say that. That's exactly what you said. You were like, he can't direct anything but Starship Troopers. Like, Robocop was okay, yeah, I yeah. guess. Yeah, get fucked, Paul Verhoeven. <laughs> I mean, I do like Hollow Man. It's it's cheesy and it's gross, but uh, Never saw it's, it. it's fun. If you like your Invisible Man super rapey, it's a blast. Is there any other kind? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, Ridley Scott, if you're out there, make, remake Starship Troopers. Mm, I no, watch it. No, Ridley Scott, you're old as fuck, and House of Gucci will be your last movie. He had two movies this year, like, with a month apart. It's great that you just shit on uh, Ridley Scott, considering, didn't you really like Last Duel? Yeah. So. No, it's just like, he's old, and he's going to die soon, and he's, he's, uh, not, he's not going to make anything. Just take after your brother and do it already. <laughs> Pick the same bridge and just do it. No, It'd be thought, romantic in a way. <laughs> I like Ridley Scott. It's just he's he swings so wildly. Whereas you have some directors who are just hit, 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 hit. You know, you take your your. Um, yeah, I mean, he was knocking out of the park for a while, and then like before he did Last Duel, he did. Uh, I mean, maybe he did something in between, but he did that Mark Wahlberg. Uh, Max von Sydow, like all the money in the world movie or something. Is that really scary? Yeah. Oh, and that wasn't received very well, was it? Well, oh, actually, I think it got like extra praise because they took out Kevin Spacey, right? I was gonna say, I think someone problematic was in it. I think it might have been Kevin Spacey, Spacey, and they replaced it with Max von Sydow. Yeah, (laughs) Max von Sydow. Uh, Good, good. And like, I think, yeah, I think it got praise, but like, no one saw it. Didn't make any money. Because I think Just like was, no one cares about that. Wasn't that right at the beginning of the pandemic too? I think so. Yeah, and so what was before that? Um, the Martian. Uh, I mean, he, he probably did something. After. I feel like he does a movie every year. It's just <laughs> it's it just every other year is the one that people see. Yeah, you got um, your gods of Exodus or God? No, no, Exodus, yeah. gods of Egypt. Yeah. Yeah, I got ten minutes in that movie, and I was like, you know what? I don't care. It, it looked like Kingdom of Heaven to me, and I don't like Kingdom of Heaven. I like Kingdom of Heaven. But I hear the director's cut of Kingdom of Heaven is amazing and shits all over the theatrical release. Like, it's so much different, it makes it amazing. I think I have the director's edition of it, and I don't remember what's different. Mm. But either way, I'm, I like Kingdom of Heaven. I, yeah, I it's think not it, the one time. And I think it's under underrated. Um, but what would... Oh, yeah, Martian. Martian was good. I like the Martian. Yeah, Martian's good. I read the second book from the guy who wrote Martian. That'd make a, a good movie as well. I'm sure it's already been optioned. Probably. Um, I'm, well, no, let me just look up Ready Scott. Uh, uh, Ready Scott. Let's see how old he is. He's 90, I think. Born in 1937, so he is 84, mm. or he'll be 84 
tomorrow. Yeah, his birthday's tomorrow. Wow. Weird. Yeah. Happy birthday, really, Scott. Yeah. All right, director versus director. <laughs> um, A section that doesn't deserve its own song. So here's his past movies since 2010. So Robin Hood. <coughs> Never saw it, but. <coughs> in 2010. Prometheus. Mm. 2012. The Counselor. 2013. No. Um, Exodus Gods and Kings. 2014. The Martian. 2015. Alien Covenant. Mm. 2017. All the Money in the World. Also 2017. So not right before the pandemic mm, no <laughs> pandemic <laughs> unless it, would, it just says 2017 because that like, was when they ended production but then or, maybe it took a while because they had to replace whatever, it whatever who knows um he's done several commercials directed two episodes of Raised by Wolves mm. oh so mm. he after 2017 he didn't really direct anything mm. until well, 2021 well I'm sure Last Duel was a 2020 movie so, whatever, man. Maybe he just is good at multitasking. Mm, yeah. House of Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. Gucci. <sighs> like I want to see it because I know it's gonna be good. I know it's gonna be up for stuff. See, I don't care at all. But it, it's one of those things. I, I don't care about this family, and it's one of those ads that always plays before something on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So I'm constantly hearing the same bit over and over again, and it just makes you not want to see a movie. Yeah, I feel like it's it's one of those movies on paper sounds good because it, it got this like good fellas vibe where it's just like if it was Scorsese directed to be like of course it's just like this family and dealing with like corruption and gangs and murder and intrigue it's like oh that sounds good but then like looking at that trailer I'm like this looks boring yeah I also don't care about rich fucking people and, like oh I'm on blood power so I must kill my family but also I dress really well so mm. there's that. But Adam Driver's great. Lady yeah. Gaga has proven herself to be a good actress. Jared Leto, looking pretty good in under the all that makeup. Um, Pacino, he can go kick rocks. <laughs> well, let's wrap it up then. Thanks everyone for tuning in to another episode of This Meets That and Director vs. Director. WRPL Podcast at gmail.com and at WRPL Podcast on Twitter. Always appreciate it. My name is Ben. And I'm Steve. Bye.